They say that money can't buy happiness, and yet many people play the lottery on a regular basis, hoping for a life-changing win. But even though winning a multi-million dollar jackpot usually changes people's lives quite a bit, it isn't always in the way they expected. While some winners manage to make the best of their windfall, others end up in dire straits. So stay tuned as we check in on 10 Powerball winners to see where they are today. Raymond Buxton had been playing the lottery for about two decades when he finally got lucky in 2014. He bought two Powerball Quick Pick tickets and ended up winning the jackpot of $425 million, which was not only the biggest jackpot in California, but also one of the biggest wins in the history of the US. Buxton opted for the lump sum payoff of $242.2 million before taxes for his Powerball jackpot and stated that he wanted to maintain his privacy. While he did didn't reveal any personal details, he did explain that he waited a couple of months to come forward and claim his win because he wanted a team of lawyers and financial advisors behind him to help him manage his incredible fortune and deal with everything that goes with suddenly becoming a multi-millionaire. Buxton decided to put most of his winnings towards charity, saying that he was looking forward to his new job setting up a charitable foundation focused on the areas of pediatric health, child hunger, and education. Back in February 2015, Mary Holmes won one-third of the $564.1 million Powerball jackpot and the lump sum she took home was about $127 million before taxes. The lottery winner who used to work at supermarkets and fast food joints to support her children, one of which had cerebral palsy, planned to spend a lot of the money on her kids, but also stated that she wanted to finish college, support charities, and buy her own family as well as her mom new houses. In addition to that, the lucky jackpot winner donated 10% of her winnings to Pleasant Hill Missionary Baptist Church, which after taxes amounted to about $1.5 million, the largest ever donation made to a church from a lottery win. While most people would have been very grateful to receive that much money, the pastor of this church had a slightly different reaction to the donation. He actually decided to sue Mary Holmes for more money, claiming that she had pledged to donate up to $10 million to his church. The lottery winner also spent several millions of dollars on bailing her boyfriend out of jail repeatedly, something which she probably regretted later on as he reportedly took her money to give it to other women in exchange for sexual favors. But while her private life may have been a mess, Mary Holmes did successfully help others in need and is still doing so through her foundation. She made an initial investment of $9.7 million in the foundation and much of this money has gone to help underprivileged children. After Cynthia P. Stafford's brother was killed by a drunk driver, she took in his five children and raised them as a single mother while helping out her father financially as well. As you can imagine, money was tight, so the family of six was living in a house of just 1,000 square feet and struggling to pay the bills. That's why Stafford started dreaming of winning the lottery, and not just any lottery either, but actually a $112 million jackpot. And in January of 2007, that is exactly what she did. The number 100. 12 million had popped into her head three years earlier, and after that, she had started focusing on winning that amount. According to Stafford, she actually wrote the number on a note and slept with it under her pillow, meditated on winning a $112 million jackpot, and also visualized how it would feel once she won. In an amazing and inexplicable stroke of luck, three years later, the single mother of five won a life changing Powerball jackpot, which was the exact jackpot she had dreamed of winning for all those years. Stafford had been buying tickets just a couple of times a month and always picked whichever numbers came into her head at the moment. She attributes her prize, which allowed her to not only solve her family's financial problems, but also start a film company to fulfill her dream to the law of attraction as well as prayer. In 2008, 19-year-old construction worker Jonathan Vargas became one of the youngest lottery winners ever when he won the $35.3 million Powerball jackpot. Being a loving son, the first thing he did was buy his mom a brand new house. However, he also showed that he was still a teenager when he decided to fulfill his dream and create his own wrestling TV show called Wrestlelicious Takedown. The show featured scantily dressed women and sketch comedy, but apparently that wasn't enough to make it successful. The show was cancelled after just one season and reportedly left Vargas bankrupt. 
Les Robbins was a high school teacher who cared very much about the kids he was teaching and often thought it was a shame that kids today usually don't grow up doing the kinds of activities he himself had enjoyed as a child, like going to camp, swimming, playing sports, or exploring the outdoors. So when he was lucky enough to win a $111 million Powerball jackpot, Robbins decided to use the money to create a camp of his own and bring some of the joys of his childhood to other children. The teacher founded Camp Winnegate on 226 acres that he bought with his lottery money. The camp operated for over a decade and gave parents the opportunity to send their children to camp at a low cost so they could spend their summer in a place where they could horseback ride, craft, swim, and play on the lake. And this way, the kids also had a chance to disconnect from video games and cell phones and get in touch with nature and their real life friends. After Gloria McKenzie had been the record holder for the largest jackpot ever won by just one person for about four years, Mavis L. Wanziak of Chicopee, Massachusetts set a new record when she claimed the winning ticket for the $758.7 million Powerball jackpot in August of 2017. She was the only one to beat the odds of 1 in 292.2 million, which is about the same as flipping a coin and having it land on heads 28 times in a row. According According to mathematician Professor Cornelius Nealon, and decided to take home the cash lump sum of a whopping $480.5 million before taxes. Mavis had only found out that she had won because a friend had noted the winning numbers and when she realized she had won, she was so shocked that she couldn't do anything and the friend made her sign the ticket to ensure that it couldn't be stolen. The friend also made sure she got home safely, where Mavis spent the first night as a lottery jackpot winner hiding in her bed. Once she had wrapped her head around her new reality, she decided to call up her employer at Mercy Medical Center where she had worked for 32 years and quit her job as a nurse, retiring early while the store where Mavis had bought the winning ticket and which therefore earned the commission from the winning number generously donated all the money they received to charity. David Lee Edwards was a convicted felon when he won $27 million in the Kentucky Powerball back in 2001 and he quickly went on an insane shopping spree, buying multiple cars, a house, a medieval armor and weapons collection, a private jet, racing horses that kept losing, and a Hummer golf cart for his daughter, among other things. Within one year, Edwards had spent roughly $12 million and contracted hepatitis from repeated drug abuse. By 2006, all of his his lottery winnings were gone, his wife had left him because he was broke and he was forced to sell all of his belongings. Edwards ended up living in a storage unit where he died alone surrounded by his own feces, owing thousands of dollars just 12 years after winning $27 million in the Powerball. The world's largest jackpot in cash value and annuity was drawn on January 13th, 2016, according to CNN Money, and there were three winning tickets for history's biggest prize of an amazing $1.586 billion in the Powerball lottery. The winners were John and Lisa Robinson in Tennessee, Maureen Smith and David Kulschmidt in Florida, and Marvin and May Acosta in California, who all had the option of receiving roughly $533 million before taxes as an annuity or $327.8 million as the lump sum payment and all went for the ever popular one-time payment. The Robinsons from Tennessee had bought their winning ticket as one of four they bought at a grocery store and then opted for the lump sum, saying, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. Smith and Kultschmidt from Florida told NBC that they were planning to get massages, upgrade their truck, and retire with their newfound wealth. While the Acostas remained anonymous for months after winning and also took a full six months to claim their $327.8 million lump sum. They chose to do the smart thing and lawyer up, consult financial advisors, and generally wrap their heads around the incredible amount of money they had won before picking up the check. However, the couple eventually released a statement saying they were thankful for the rare gift that has been placed in our care. When Paul and Sue Rosnow won a Powerball jackpot of $181.2 million from a drawing in 2008, they immediately knew exactly what they wanted to do with all the money. The couple had bought their winning ticket on the day of the fifth anniversary of their oldest granddaughter Michaela's death from a rare and incurable disease. In fact, crab disease is so rare that only one out of about 100,000 newborns are affected, which means that it is too rare to receive the kind of funding that many more 
common diseases do. It is a devastating degenerative illness that attacks the lining of the nerves and usually results in death within the first two years. But the Powerball winners decided to use their jackpot money to fight the disease that had killed their beloved granddaughter. Paul and Sue Rosnow founded the Legacy of Angels to not only increase awareness of crab disease as well as cystic fibrosis, another disease that was discovered in their family, but also to help fund promising research into treatment and possible cures. When Brad Duke won $220 million in 2005, he was already a successful businessman and director of Gold's Gyms in Idaho. After electing for the lump sum and paying the necessary taxes, Duke received $86 million, but decided to keep his job and work towards the slightly lofty goal of becoming a billionaire. Initially, Duke was planning to achieve billionaire status within three years, but his advisors steered him towards planning to reach his goal within 15 years instead. The 15 years are up this year, and even though Duke still hasn't achieved his goal, he has more than doubled his net worth since winning the lottery, and has stated that he is rather content with his current financial situation, and is looking at achieving billionaire status as more of a lifelong journey these days. Thank you for checking this video out, and don't forget to smash that like button, and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again thank you for watching and see you next time.